Hello. I'm Will Dean. I'm here in the forest outside my cabin. I thought I'd have a cup of tea and a chat with you. Thought we could chat a little bit about micro failures or times we all stumble. I know that a lot of people are out there looking for agents, writing, querying, sending letters and sample chapters out into the ether, hoping that an agent will suddenly fall in love with your writing. That was me just a few years ago. It's the toughest time, or one of the toughest times for a writer, because you're not quite in the system yet and you feel like it's never going to happen you feel like the odds are stacked against you you feel like maybe every author who's got a book deal has a rolodex of contacts rather than just wrote something good with a good cover letter that got noticed and I've been there we've all been there I totally remember vividly the pain <laughs> and the self-doubt of those years that I spent getting rejected. The thing is with those rejections and they come in different forms as, as you know they come in the form first of all the most brutal is you just never hear from that person again. And that gives you so much kind of doubt and such a blow to your confidence because you don't even know if it got there. You don't even know if that agent is taking on new clients, reading the work. The truth is the agents are just incredibly busy people. They really don't have time to spend more than a couple of seconds looking through each submission as they're on the tube. You know, my agent in the daytime, she's really busy working for for me and her other clients, you know. And so she's reading her queries on the way to work, walking through the park or on, in the evening um, if she's got a spare five minutes or on the weekend. So they can't spend that much time on each one. That's just the brutal truth of it. But when you get a rejection, which is like a non-rejection, it's, it's nothing, you just don't hear, it, it knocks you. When you get a rejection, which is a standard form rejection, it knocks you. I remember I used to get a rejection like that and I would try and read stuff into it, you know? If they said, you know, they give you some kind of vague compliment maybe, and you think, yeah, maybe I can write, Maybe, maybe I can do this thing. And the truth is, it's a standard form rejection. You kind of know in your heart it's a standard form rejection. Then you get a personalized rejection. That's a little bit better. You're getting closer. Somebody's taking the time to write you a couple of lines on an email. That's exciting. But it's also brutal because you know you got close. And then there's the full request. You get a full request and suddenly you start imagining what it might be like to be a published author. You start imagining what that press release might look like, your first book deal, and then the agent turns it down. And you think to yourself, Jesus, I, uh, the cover letter was obviously good, the synopsis is okay, the first chapters were fine, but the rest of the book clearly sucks and maybe this is never going to happen maybe i should try pottery instead or something haberdashery botany and that's tough and then the next level is you get an agent and you feel like it's all you're in the system everything's going to be good and then your book goes out on submission a month later or a year later and no editors pick it up. Soul destroying, right? Tough, really, really tough. And with all of these things, you just 
you've got two options you quit or you dust yourself off and just crack on and I think to some extent the more rejections you receive the easier it gets because your skin does thicken up and you start to understand it's inevitable and as long as you're doing your best that's all you can do right and I remember my granddad telling me this when I was 10 years old I was a really shy kid in the Midlands and uh, he had had a really really rough poor childhood you know homeless at times a really 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 tough childhood I'll talk about it one day but he said he had a really really hard childhood very insecure and he, he failed his 11 plus and he used to say to me you know try and pass your 11 plus but like, you can only do your best And I like that because he was saying, you know, go for it. But at the same time, what will be, will be. So same with trying to get published, trying to get an agent. You keep on trying your best. You keep on submitting. And right now, you know, for me, keep on just writing books and you do your best. And those rejections, those micro failures are completely normal and inevitable. I don't know any author who hasn't been rejected like a bunch of times. And the thing is, it never stops. Like you get rejected after you've been published. Let's say you've been published for 15 years. You've had 10 books out. You've won a bunch of awards. You've hit a bunch of charts. You're still getting rejected fairly frequently by foreign publishers, by movie studios, whatever it is. And you learn not to take it personally. It's just not a good match. Your piece of work, not a good match for that studio or publisher. It's just the way it is. Not everything is going to fit everything else. But I think at those early stages, when you write your first book or your second book, and it and you you have that realization that it, it hasn't worked out I remember I did this with a book that I wrote before my debut that was a failure and it was kind of uh, starting to get interest from agents starting to get full requests and I I pulled it and you have that realization that moment where you're like I've got to write a new book I've got to write another book that book that I spent three years on is not going to do this it's not going to do it for me it's not going to work I've got to write a new book and there's kind of a weight off your shoulders when you realize that but there's also a realization you're going into a bunch of new um, work you know another thousand hours or ten thousand hours whatever it takes to write that book but out of those little failures those little knockbacks, those constant hurdles, those constant stumbling blocks, out of all of that comes a career that you're kind of proud of. And I don't like the pride thing. I'm not proud really of anything. I don't, I feel very uncomfortable with the idea of pride, but you, you feel like you've earned it in some way. And you also know that you can do it again. If you start getting knockbacks again, you can go away, learn, do it better, and come back. So, yeah, those, those rejections that seem so epic at the time, they, years later, they feel so kind of irrelevant, or, or, or they're just very small things. The key is to keep on going, keep on pushing, keep on trying new things, keep on finding joy in the work, not the accomplishment, but the actual work. Maybe I'll talk about that in another video. Thank you for joining me here in my forest. I'll be back soon. Bye-bye.